We are getting close to the end of this fun activity. We have facilities and pests, and then we're done. Do a little bit of review at the end, and we're done. Just as important to have a clean outside as a clean inside, because the bugs get uh, the rut, the pests, and all get closer to your back door, and then you open the door, smells good in there, and they run in. So you need to make sure that the outside is uh, also clean, containers are covered, clean frequently. All areas are well drained to prevent pests from finding shelter in or near standing water. Put some water out there. They like to drink that. They're going to be nice and close, and they are going to run into your place. So make sure the back is spick and span. Keep the area clean, litter free. Make sure the garbage is removed often so it doesn't smell. People that walk by, drive by, they see it messy, they smell your dumpster, they're going to assume probably correctly that the inside is reflected by the outside and also nasty. We're going to discuss a few things related to uh, backflow or back siphonage of water from the dirty water back into the clean water lines. So uh, first we need to talk about what backflow is and then we'll figure out how to keep it from happening. So backflow or sometimes called back siphonage on the tests and elsewhere is caused when there's a sudden drop of pressure in the potable water lines drinking water right which causes non potable water to be sucked into the potable water lines for example if there's a fire down the street and the fire department is using the water supply the water pressure can become negative think of it if you've ever done this um, you ran out of gas somebody stops by you're going to get some gas out of their tank and uh, put it into your tank you would take uh, put a, a hose down into their gas tank and you sock to create a negative pressure and then the gas comes out of there once it flows it'll flow on its own right because you created a, a negative uh, pressure that same thing here so if the fire department's using all the uh, pressure on their end then you could suck the water up uh, from let's say your sink into the clean water lines okay so that's what backflow and back siphonage is and now we'll figure out how to make sure that doesn't happen so the first way to prevent that um, backflow or back siphonage is with an air gap which is the space between the faucet which sometimes they'll call a water outlet device on the exams and the highest level the water can rise so the space between the faucet so the faucet's dipping down right uh, and you don't want it to go in to ever be able to hit the water so it's the space between the faucet and the highest level the water can rise in the sink so you make sure that you have an air gap there to prevent the backflow of non-potable water into the potable water supply. So no matter how high you put the water in the sink, it cannot reach the faucet. Another way to prevent backflow is the space between the bottom of the pipe and the floor drain. So this is a pipe on uh, like a steam jacketed kettle. There's a pipe that comes out the side and there's always a drain underneath it. Well, the distance between the bottom of the pipe and the floor drain must be twice the diameter of the pipe, two times the diameter of the pipe. So if the pipe were a one-inch pipe, you'd have to have two inches between the bottom of the pipe and the floor, and that's in case the uh, floor floods, and you don't want that pipe to suck that water up into your clean water system. Now, cross-connection is different. That's where the potable and non-potable water lines are mixed together in the plumbing lines. So that's the dumb plumber uh, project there where you took two lines that go together, one maybe coming out of the toilet and one that's from the um, um, sink, and you put them together. So that's a condition where the potable and non-potable water lines are mixed together in the plumbing lines. That's called a cross-connection. Pipes carrying raw sewage from toilets will be connected directly to potable water lines used for the hand washing sink. Sounds yucky, sounds stupid, must have happened, or we wouldn't have uh, information uh, about it in the books and on the tests. All water used in food production must be potable, which is drinking quality. Water used to clean equipment and utensils must be potable.
basically the rule of the thumb is if you can see the water it must be potable The only permitted use of non-potable water in a food service establishment is for such things like air conditioning, fire protection. Remember, you can't see that water, so that's fine. doesn't mean it's poopy water. It just means it's not treated for drinking. So those would be non-potable uh, in such things as uh, air conditioning, fire pr uh, protection. If you can see it, the water must be potable. So you open the door to your office and a load of poop floats past you. Oh, what do you do first? If there's a sewage backup into the food processing area, you stop production immediately. Protect the food from contamination. Then you call from help, notify whoever you got to notify. But the first thing you do is you stop them from producing any food. Sewer pipes can never be placed above food preparation areas for the obvious reason that in case they drip, they drip into the food. So you can never put a sewer pipe over the food prep area. Gathered here, a lot of people we're talking to who work nearby say they couldn't believe the rodents crawling all around in plain sight. Oh my God! I just the, the there's there's rat dude there's rat doo doo everywhere. Oh, <laughs> this is gross. Giant rats roam free on the floor of this popular fast food restaurant on Sixth Avenue near West Third Street in the Village. Locals have been watching in disgust. Sir, what is your to help name? the store managers arrived to a media frenzy. Employees starting to prepare for lunch, but eventually sneaking out a back door. I used to eat in here. I can't believe this is happening. I just saw what was in the window, and it's unbelievable. I won't eat here again, that's for sure. You can count on that. The health department has issued violations, including evidence of rats in the food areas of the Taco Bell KFC. One former employee says workers don't wear gloves and that rats come into contact with food on a regular basis. Food, he says, that is then served to customers. I'm not eating here again. <laughs> Locals say this area of 6th Avenue is notorious for rats, but it is unusual to see such a popular fast food place overrun with rodents. Health department officials saw the infestation on live TV and now say the store is closed indefinitely. At least a dozen news organizations are represented here. Everybody's here waiting because health officials are inside. They are meeting with managers. This restaurant has a history of violations in the past. It dates back to 2004. At this point, no word when or if this restaurant will reopen. And oh my gosh, Lisa, it's just frightening to think they were open yesterday. Thank you so much. Well, of course, you're probably wondering about other restaurants, and Fox 5 wants to keep you informed, so you can just log on to MyFoxNY.com for a link to the Department of Health's restaurant ratings. So seal all the excess areas, including cracks in the walls, if you don't want to be on TV like they were. What happened was uh, Somebody was uh, leaning against the window waiting for a bus, and they happened to turn around, and the lights from the street were beaming in, and they saw the rats, and they thought, hmm, I'll bet the TV stations would love to see that, and they did. I think they said there were six national TV stations there observing that wonderful scene, so you don't want that to happen. I, actually, I happened to meet the guy who was responsible for construction for uh, Yum Corporation, which is KFC Taco Bell. And he said that there was construction in the area. Uh, the TV uh, clip said that there were a lot of rats in the area, and he says that uh, the construction caused the cracks in the wall below to uh, open, and so the rats came through. However, TV said that that restaurant's had problems since 2004, and this was now 2007, um, and that many rats didn't just show up that day. They'd obviously been around, so um, they didn't do anything about it. They must have, when they showed up for work in the morning, you can imagine the people saw the saw the rats, um, and actually a former employee said they, they saw rats in there. So anyway, they could have done better, should have done better, and now that's not a restaurant anymore. I think it's a clothing store. Who's going to go in there? Um, would you go to the restaurant next to that? I wouldn't. Would you go down the street? I don't know. How far away would you have to go? I would say uh, probably across the tunnel into New Jersey would be <laughs> safe enough.
the doorways uh, should seal when closed, otherwise they're going to run through the uh, uh, the crack between the doors. Uh, make sure that uh, you don't leave doors open to the outside. That could be part of the problem too, especially if there's a bunch in the area. And if you see evidence of rats, do something about them before you're on TV. Uh, there was more uh, than the restaurant that got in trouble, the health department got in trouble. So they reacted by closing about 150 restaurants, if I remember right. So then the restaurant association saying, well, you know, uh, you're overreacting, or the, or the uh, restaurants are saying, you know, you went like too far. Then uh, the TV caught a health inspector sleeping on a bar in a restaurant he was supposed to be inspecting. So there was a lot, as there should have been, uh, a, a lot happened, and probably in the end it was a good thing because they cleaned up a bunch of mess. Prevention is the best policy. Make sure that uh, they can't get in, that you that you patch those uh, cracks in the wall and um, keep the place clean. Don't leave food lying around. Keep the, uh, clean the place up at night so there's no food. And just keep them out. Eliminate the areas where the pests live. If you got areas where, uh, let's say you mop the floors at night and some water every night uh, ends up there because the, the tiles run down a little bit, well, you need to fix that. Keep the outside and the inside uh, non-food areas clean, neat, and well lighted. Inspect all incoming shipments. Keep outside areas, especially around the dumpsters, clean. Keep the trash picked up. Eliminate anything that looks like it would attract a pest. Keep rubbish containers clean and covered. Cockroaches carry disease-causing bacteria such as salmonella. Signs of roach infestation are egg casings and droppings. Good housekeeping greatly reduces the opportunity for roaches. Clean the place up and guess what? You don't have so many roaches anymore. It's amazing how that works. So do it.